Okay, so uh, this evening, uh, um, it's my second uh, attempt at meeting up with you, Mark, and thanks for persisting. Uh, now, the audio is probably slightly better than uh, uh, it was just earlier. We we're echoing. But yeah, uh, I'm working with students at an engineering school, um, uh, Digital Sciences, and one of their objectives is to um, can translate engineering speak into easily digestible chunks of communication. Uh, so it's basically, as you can see at the top here, how mm -hmm. to, the, the how to not to TLDR, too long, didn't read. So today, um, I've, you've, you've agreed to be a guest and it's the too long, didn't read. We want to avoid that. How do we get through all the dense material, all the written material? So we have an executive summary of what a product is about and you're here today to talk about a product that you're working on and i'll mm -hmm. pose you f i'll ask you five points uh and hopefully at the end of this um students could easily write an executive summary from what you say so mark could you just introduce yourself um who you are and what your awesome, objective yeah. is yeah yeah thanks a lot paul for having me um so uh, I'm, an, I'm an engineer at a startup called Willow. Um, Willow makes an automatic toothbrush. Um, I can explain uh, in details what it is, but I can I'll talk a little bit uh, more about when I joined uh, just three years ago. Uh, in 2018, it was a team of 10 people. Now we're 30, so we grew a lot. Uh, and I was a mechanical engineer at the company in the first year. And now I'm doing software engineering. Um, what is the product? What is an automatic toothbrush? Uh, it's basically uh, a mouthpiece uh, that brushes your teeth all at once and automatically. You don't have to do the, the, the gestures that you go with a manual toothbrush, you go back and forth, nor with an electric toothbrush, which is basically you have to still aim for each tooth. Our toothbrush basically brushes all your teeth at the same time. Okay, you, you mentioned there are now 10 people in the company. There's 30 today. 30. I, joined as their, yeah, I joined as their 10th employee. As a 10th, okay. And that means that people are doing very different jobs. And yes. In a pie chart, how much is dev, how much is ops, and how much is conceptualizing? Sure, so our software, software engineering team uh, since it's a hardware company, we have a lot of mechanic engineers. Um, so the, the the roles that you mentioned are uh, in software engineering. We're all we're five people in software engineering. So there is a there is a two people in firmware, which is uh, uh, the engineers that that are working on uh, uh, the firmware of the of the toothbrush. Uh, there's three people working on uh, web technology, so you can think of the mobile app that is going to come with the toothbrush. We have a website for people to purchase the toothbrush. And we have an engineering manager who manages uh, all, uh, all of us. Okay. And what's the stability and longevity of an in-the-mouth brace toothbrush? Um, how can it sustain on the market? So... Our go-to market are, is going to be a uh, uh, niche. So basically aiming for the people that needs the most our toothbrush. You can think of uh, kids um, who need uh, assistance from their parents to brush their teeth. Uh, you can think of uh, the elderly who might need someone like a nurse to brush their teeth. This product is really um, is going to be a, re a revolution for them because they're going to be able to just put the mouthpiece in their mouth, click a button, and that's it. Uh, all they need to do is just wait for their teeth to be clean. Okay. Um, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The wait, wait for their teeth to be clean. Um, I'm quite a procrastinator in the morning, and I just do like three, four brushes, and I and I feel like I've a. That's a task that I don't want to uh, put time into. 
So maybe it could be aimed at anybody who's a bit lazy. So our 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 vision is to is to have this toothbrush for everyone. Um, believe it or not, most so the average uh, cleaning that people do, they only brush forty percent of their plaque. Plaque is basically the biofilm or the bacteria that that you develop when you eat food, and you can kind of feel it when you eat a lot of sugar. Um, so when you're doing when you're brushing your teeth, on average you're brushing only forty percent, uh, and that's uh, and that's not good. Uh, you can think of all the gum diseases that that people have. Um, you can think of all the uh, the caries that people develop, actually 90% uh, of people uh, in the U.S. Uh, develop uh, some sort of caries over their, uh, over their life. Mm. Um, like the, the cavities that we need filling cavities. at the dentist. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That can cost uh, each time you, it's a cost at the dentist. So maybe this uh, can invoke confidence in some people that they can reduce their visits to the dentist. <laughs> But it's exactly, a, it's not a medical application, obviously. It's not. Uh, it definitely, if you if you if you have healthy teeth, you definitely can reduce your visits to the dentist. Um, that's uh, something. But what's most uh, surprising as well, there's uh, if you have gum diseases or uh, uh, teeth problems, you actually develop other diseases that come oh. with it that is not related uh, somehow to your teeth. But um, I don't have the uh, the exact diseases and names on my mind. Yeah. But you can look you can look it up and you can actually find it quite fascinating that uh, when you care about your dental hygiene, uh, you actually care of your overall health in general. Yeah, mate, it's a it's a biological system that um, taps into every part. Mm -hmm. If you neglect one aspect, then you. Uh, you can have make side effects in other parts of the body, maybe. Okay. Exactly. So that's some surprising research that people can probably dig into. Um, what's the unique advantage, would you say? So um, the unique advantage is that um, it's automatic. Um, it's really, like I said, you just put it in your mouth, you click on a button, and you just wait for it to be clean. You can think of it as a washing machine. Um, it's really a, a, a unique product in the sense that uh, the toothbrush haven't been uh, changed over the last like couple of hundred of years. We had them. We started with a manual toothbrush. Uh, now we have electric toothbrush, but it's still it's still a lot of manual work. Um, mm -hmm. So you, the uniqueness of Willow is uh, really its aspect as a robot that cleans your teeth, and it removes all all sort of um, uh, all sort of uh, inefficiencies mm -hmm. uh, when you brush your teeth, um, and we aim for obviously a very high ev efficiency uh, than the than the average uh, than the average efficiency or average cleaning. I got it. Um, and in in sh in a pharmacy, do you think it's likely to be in a pharmacy or? Um... Uh, in a large supermarket space that's a good that's a good question um so we're aiming first to be a direct to consumer product um so we don't you know we try to avoid the middleman uh in the beginning of a startup a lot of people uh, are fan of direct to consumer consumer because you have a brand you go to the website you click and we have a we also have a subscription um uh, that comes with the toothbrush uh, it's actually uh, it's actually the toothpaste and the mouthpiece that is shipped every three months. Uh, so you, you can think of it as a recurring product. Um, the toothbrush itself um, is a, is a one-time uh, purchase, yeah. uh, and then you have a recurring uh, subscription every three months. So um, it's essential that people come to the website and, and buy it through, through it. And then eventually, if, uh, if we're known uh, if we if we get traction, uh, we can go to pharmacies. We can go to we can think of it. I didn't mention the the target audience is going to be the United States market. Yeah. Uh, so you can think. I of think you target. did touch on that earlier. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A United target. States. Yes. Um, so Target, Walmart, mm -hmm. uh, big uh, big uh, big stores. 
uh, we can be there, but it's, uh, in the beginning, we're going to aim for direct consumers, so directly on our website. And just, and just, just, um, just uh, a little comedy side point to make. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe in in the US, we feel like people are more um, aware of their smile. And for instance, I'm a Brit, and we're not known for having amazing smiles. There's lots of crooked smiles, and maybe that gives us a lot of um, uh, character. But um, yeah, the US market's large. Is that the reason why? Do you think you're trying to? That's a very, very. That's a very good point, Paul. Um, uh, Americans care a lot about about their teeth. You can think of all the Hollywood uh, stars that have like shiny, shiny teeth. And everybody wants to have these uh, shiny teeth. Actually, Americans spend around eighty billion dollars each year on dental products uh, uh, and visit to the dentist. So it's a huge market uh, in the United States, and that's why we're aiming for uh, for a market like the the U.S. Uh, because it's uh, it's huge, and we can take uh, we can aim for a small cut of it. Okay, Mark, uh, Dev at Willow, thanks for joining the How. The how to not to T L D R too long didn't read. So I think the students now have the, the task of producing uh, an executive summary, an executive summary from the ideas that you've just uh, shared with us, um, yeah. which hit the five points. So thanks for that. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Bob. And uh, just generally, could you just run down how long have you been in your job? Recap the job title, how long you've been in the job, how you got there. Sure. So I've, um, I've been uh, at Willow for three years now. I joined in 2018. Um, I joined as a mechanic engineer. I stayed uh, for one year and a half as a mechanic engineer. So it's, it's part of the design of the hardware product. Um, and, and then I transitioned as a software engineer um, uh, a year after. Uh, as a mechanic engineer, uh, and I've been doing software since uh, since one year and a half now. So I'm not uh, maybe as expert as your students, uh, but I try to get the job done. I think after somebody told me recently, after three years, you are senior in many types of uh, information science today. Um, uh, yes, uh, but since I didn't stay in the same position. Um, I would say I'm still not a senior, so I'm a junior. Okay. And you're joining us from Paris today? This yes, so I'm, I'm, joining, I'm joining from Paris. And uh, I actually started at, at Willow in New York. Uh, I used to live in Chicago, and then I joined, uh, I joined in, uh, in France uh, after I got uh, my French visa to come work with the engineering team in France. Okay. And just finally, I'd just like to say we met through a network called lunch club which i think if the tldr comes into play um it's just simply give your oh, availability yeah. give your availability and the mm -hmm. algorithm will match you with somebody according to your uh preferences that you gave the the the, the robot and uh we uh our, our profiles chimed and then we chatted for one hour and here we are again um, yeah, yeah, Paul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lunch club is amazing. So I, I met you on lunch club, and um, yeah, it's so easy to use. You just give your availability, and then you get to meet someone mm. uh, for forty-five minutes yeah. and to chat with them. Yeah, I think it's be curious and not suspicious. If send you some somebody sends you the link as a friend, uh, just try it. Lunch club, and that's not an advert. It's just that it, it helps you meet nice people who got something to share uh, to improve how you brush your teeth. Definitely. That's one thing. All right. Mark, cheers. I'm just going to cut, cut the audio. All right. Sure.